Alrighty guys, I'm back. Um, <clears throat> ready to make the welt. I've got my belt loop stitched down good. Ain't going anywhere. And there is plenty of room for a belt. So, um, next thing is I'm going to cut the welt. And this is where I'm going to have to decide if I want a ferro loop, ferro rod loop or not. Um, I just got a scrap. That's left over from, I don't know, a holster or something. And I'm just going to set it in there. And I'm going to outline it. So I'm going to take... You'll never see any of this, so I'm not going to be too concerned about it. I'm going to take my fancy red pen. And just draw around it. So I have that and basically I'm just going to take when when I made the pattern I left enough room for about a quarter of an inch welt so I'm going to go and just just kind of rough it in perfect is not what I'm calling this because you'll a you'll never see the inside of the the sheath, and b we will do a little finishing on the inside of this welt. And I'm far from an artist. So that's what it's going to look like. The welt is just going to be that thin area there. I'm going to cut this out. I'll be back. Okay, I got my welt cut out. I am just going to take on the inside, and this is mostly to protect the leather. I'm just going to dye it. I'm not going to burnish it because it's just not necessary. But I'm going to dye it just to keep uh, water and such out. And just this inside portion there, not the outside. And after the dye sets up good. I had a sneeze coming, guys. <laughs> Whew, excuse me. After the dye is uh, reasonably dry, I'll put a little tan coat on it. And then I'm going to tan coat the inside of the sheath too. Um, and that's purely just for um, to keep the water out. I left enough room down on the bottom so that there will be a drain hole at the bottom of the sheath. Um, like I said, this one's going to be for me. I did decide not to put a ferro rod loop on it because I have a couple of them that are on various different parts of me. So. <laughs> when I'm out in the uh, out bushcrafting, which hasn't been a lot lately, but we get out once in a while. So I'm going to get my tan coat and uh, which is just a Phoebe's tan coat and it's a preservative, kinda. <laughs> it's a sealer. So I'm just going to seal the inside. Um, yeah, and I'll be back. Uh, the tan coat's not a necessary step. I just like to do it. Actually, I'm not going to do it. I'll put some on the welt because of the welt's going to need it. But the inside is finished real nice. It's nice and smooth. Um, and it is dyed. I'll oil it before I do final assembly on it. And that should take care of it for quite a while. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Uh, well... Just throw some tan coat on here quick because I didn't put a ton of dye on there so it's and I just use a q-tip to apply it it doesn't take much and 
And this is the same stuff I use on the inside of my holsters and stuff. But uh, the oil finish. I use Neat's Foot Oil. You can also use... Um, you can use like uh, coconut oil, uh, extra virgin olive oil. They don't go rancid, so you can use those on leather. Um, but like vegetable oil or peanut oil or sunflower oil, you cannot use those on leather. They tend to go rancid and they will destroy your project. So there I go. Got my tan coat on. I'm going to get ready to glue. Oh, I moved my garbage can. And, uh, be back. I have uh, my contact cement applied to one side of my welt and one side of my sheath and they're just very lightly tacky so I'll still be able to move them just a smidge if I need to. Not much of a smidge. They're glued in there pretty good. And this needs to set up for a little bit. I like to give it just a few minutes. Um, and for a few minutes, these clamps won't hurt anything as long as I'm careful putting them on. They won't leave a mark on it on the back side or anything. When I say stuff like, you know, it's the inside and it really doesn't matter because you'll never see it, I still do my best on that. I, I do, you know, it does, while it doesn't have to be perfect, it's still, you know, like I applied some dye in there because I do want it to look good. These little clamps are a wonderful thing but you need a ton of them I'm gonna give that about 10 minutes all clamped up like that that way I know it's good and solid and it's set real well before I start applying the oil and uh, we'll be back in a couple more minutes I know this is a lot of little clips but I kind of want to be as details as I can since Mike Delusha asked for this video or well kinda I told him I'd do it because he said he was gonna do the knife sheath so um, I'll be back in a minute all right folks this is what I use it's Phoebing's 100% pure neat's foot oil and I just apply it with a rag this is just a little feller and it's well soaked with oil and this stuff's pretty much made for uh, leather care just uh, give it a little shake, get some on there, wipe off a little excess. The first place I'm trying to go is down through the crease here. rest of it the neat's foot oil will make it a little tougher for the wet forming now I want to keep it away from the area in here where I still have to glue I want to stay away from that a little bit Especially up here on the top. This needs to stay flexible a little bit. And just kind of rub it in. Doesn't take much. 
some folks like to use uh, Obanoffs or uh, Carnuba cream which is fine there's a lot of other products out there too I use a couple of different ones depending on what kind of leather I'm working with and such for this uh, veg tan leather I like the Neats foot oil and I'm just kind of going to leave it at that for the time being. I'm going to get it glued the rest of the way up after this uh, oil soaks in a little bit. I'll glue it the rest of the way up and do a little trimming and let it sit overnight and then I'll be back tomorrow. So stay safe and God bless. We'll see you later.